people who are deceived. There are so many people who on that day will stand before Him and say, Lord, did I not do this in Your name? They do miracles. They heal people. and They cast out demons. And He'll say, depart from Me, you worker of lawlessness. You've done nothing but light false fire on My altar. I want to tell you something right now. I love the song, I Surrender All. It's great. I love the words of that song. And I wish I could sing it with my whole heart. But I just think someday that some big mega church is going to be singing that song and all of a sudden God's just going to kill them all. They're just going to drop over dead in the middle, middle of the chorus. I surrender and they're not even going to get to all and God's just going to kill them all for lying to Him. This is that song. He lied to the Father. He would even say, well, I lied to him because I didn't want to hurt his feelings. I lied to him because I I didn't want him to be disappointed with me. I want to tell you right now, that false righteousness gets you nowhere but to hell. You're, You're doing nothing but storing up for yourself hell. I ask you, repent tonight. Repent while there's still time left. Is that you? Are you the one coming and serving and doing all the things in the church, but deep down you know that you've prayed but never prayed? That you've worshipped but never worshipped? That maybe even you've taught but never taught? Is that you? That, that these things have been hidden from you and you have to look in religiosity, just to find meaning to all this? Or, or, or really, is there something real? I call to you tonight, and I just say, repent and believe on Jesus. An old, an old guy said, it is abominable, ab- abominable to profess and not loudly when one does not practice terrible to profess and and maybe even loudly when your profession has no substance I heard a man say one time that your profession could be one of the most dangerous things in your life because it's the thing that could cause you to blaspheme God and I just ask you tonight and I, I don't I'm not just speaking to the children. I'm not just speaking to people that don't come a lot. I'm talking to every person in here. I ask you, look into your heart and just say, am I guilty of this? It's dangerous. It is dangerous. John Speed's coming on its way here. What a testimony. Pastor to church. Unconverted. You're not even doing that. I just, I just ask you to ask yourself, and, and the profoundness of my heart, is it real? Is it really real? Or, or am I just making this stuff up? Am I, is this just something I'm a part of? You know, I want to tell you, you can hide behind, well, I stuck with Brother Randall for all these years. When others left, I didn't leave. But even in that, even in that, there could be false conversion. I promise you, these men that, that this son represents were religious. That they, they were even more religious than the Pope. He just came to visit Mexico and they had these pictures of all his religiosity. And I just picture in the last day when Jesus is enthroned, that's what they're going to be standing there in. And Jesus is going to say, I'm not on a stick. I rose from the dead and it wasn't for you. That's, that's deep. Here's a man that given his life to what he says studying the Bible. What about you? Could, could, could you be a false convert? So, he says this and he says there's this parable. Here's this father. He has two sons. One son says... I won't go. But then he goes. And the other son says, I 
Father, I, you can count on me. I, I'll go. And I imagine when his father came home that day, one of them still sitting on the couch, not doing nothing, he's going to jump up and make all kind of excuses why he didn't go. Same as maybe some of you, full of excuses of why you didn't go to the field today. The other son, I'll tell you what he's going to do. He's going to come home still ashamed that he told his father no. He's going to walk in his room. He's going to take a shower and go to bed. He doesn't need to go and say, Father, look what I did all day. Because he just did what was asked of him. So I ask you, maybe that's you as well. Maybe, maybe you're saying, well, I'm here. You're doing all this work and you just have to tell everybody. All the work you're doing, you have to build yourself up to say, look, I'm going to tell you, grace is sufficient. We don't have to do that. And, and, and grace is so much that when you're saved, the only thing you, you want to do is just say, man, I was like this and He saved me. And all this is His work. I just ask you, examine your heart tonight. And so He tells them this parable. And then He asks them a question. And I love this. Which of the two did the will of His Father... I, I can just imagine them all puffed up in their pride thinking, we can answer this one. Those, those other questions that he's been asking us to trap us, we didn't have a clue. But now we got him. So then they answered. They said, the first. They're right. The, the first did the will of the Father. They're right. But then Jesus comes and he says, Truly I say to you, tax collectors and prostitutes go into the kingdom of God before you. Two things I want to bring out here. Beautiful. There is a place in heaven for tax collectors and prostitutes. Grace is huge. Marvelous grace. Grace that is greater than all of my sin. Grace that saves me to the uttermost. Grace that purifies me and saves me from sin. There is grace. If you're here tonight and you're saying, I am the prostitute. I am the tax collector. I am the wicked one. Grace abounds to the chief of sinners. It abounds. And maybe you're here tonight and you're a false convert. Listen how it words it here. Truly I say to you, the tax collectors and prostitutes go into the kingdom of God, what? Before you. If you're still here and breathing, there's hope. There's hope in Jesus Christ. I want to tell you, that you don't have to live your whole life fearing the day that Jesus comes back because you know in the profoundness of your heart that it's wrong, that, that it's, it's not true. Because it says here that they're going to go in, some of them. There's room and grace for you. And then listen what he does here. He says, For John came to you in the way of righteousness. Here's these, these, these church leaders and these, these chief priests, and they're expecting righteousness from these people saying, you need to do this, and you need to do this, and you need to do this. Even when them, they themselves don't do it, but they're saying, you need to do this. And he's saying, guess what? John came with righteousness. John came doing these things. Throws it in their face. John, this one that you hated, you hated everything about him, you hated his teaching, the way he dressed, what he ate. You hated everything about him. But He came doing your things. He came in righteousness. You believed Him not. But you know what the even crazier thing is? Here's this man dressed up in some raggedy clothes eating bugs in the wilderness. Tax collectors and prostitutes listened to Him. I was just talking to John Speed today and I was just talking about some things and 
I thought, his church is growing. Man, if I, if I was going to live somewhere in the area, I'd drive four hours every morning to hear John Speed preach the gospel. And he's not spending thousands of dollars on hot dogs and hamburgers to have a block party. He's standing on a bench down at the bus station preaching. John the Baptist. He really is. Tax collectors and prostitutes are going to listen to him. They're going to listen to him. John came in the way. Here's these religious people all in their pride and, and in their... <clears throat> I almost started speaking in Spanish. And, and just in all of themselves, and they're, and, they're, and they're screaming, Ego, Señor, I, Lord, look, me. And he's saying, I want to tell you guys something. John the Baptist was right. You guys missed it. You guys missed it. You think you're smart. You think you got it all down. You think you got it all in your little box. You missed it. And guess what? Because of that, tax collectors and prostitutes are going in before you. I want you to a- imagine this. I promise you the story of the woman at the well is spreading by the now. Samaria is turned upside down from a, a woman that's had five husbands and the man she's living with is not her husband. It's, it's erupted. It's erupted that he went to Zacchaeus' house and ate. It's erupted. And he's saying, that woman is smarter than you. Why? The grace of Jesus Christ. That woman got it, and you didn't get it. You studied the law. You know it by memory. They probably couldn't even tell you a line of the law. One phrase. You all know it by memory. But they go in and you don't. John came preaching this righteousness. I want to tell you, if you're dependent on your works, it says in Galatians that you're already accursed. Interesting. No? If a man depends on the law to save him, he's already accursed. Why? One verse in, 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 in Romans. God did in Jesus Christ what the law, weakened by the flesh, could not do. What does that mean? You can't do it. You don't have enough works. You, you don't have enough sleeves, tricks up your sleeve to pull one out. You can't do it. You, you can't serve enough mashed potatoes and soup to get your way into heaven. You can't do it. You, you can't clean enough carpet and scrub enough pews to get your way there. It, it won't work. 